Autonomy is, a, is the new buzzword, and it's something that we're all having to deal with. And really what it comes from is what we call the, the Power Five conferences, uh, the conferences that have that big-time football program and, and are generating significant amounts of money. And what has happened is, is the way the old legislation or governance structure worked, you know, other programs that didn't necessarily play at that same level had the ability to dictate the rules that they had to live live with and live under. And I think that they felt that that wasn't really the, the right way they wanted to go about that, and, and certainly as it relates to the football programs and the way they treat their student athletes. So over the last few years, there's been a lot of conversation about what that means and what autonomy really means and, and how it's going to impact a lot of different programs. And, and at this last NCAA convention, it was the first time that some of this autonomous legislation actually came out. And the first, one of the first things that, that, uh, that those schools voted to do was to provide uh, scholarships up to the true cost of attendance. And every school has their own uh, formula to determine that amount. It's a, a federal uh, amount that's, that's determined by financial aid folks. And so what the Atlantic 10 did a couple years ago was actually made the decision at the presidential level uh, whether it was going to be a stipend or, or true cost of attendance to make sure that we do that for our men's and women's basketball programs. There's a lot of concern about autonomy, a lot of concern about what it means, but uh, to be honest, I really think that schools in the Atlantic 10 are really in a great position because we're focusing so much on men's and women's basketball. The Atlantic 10 is always, again, thinking of themselves as, as a basketball-centric league. Uh, so we know that we're competing for recruits with everybody at every level across, uh, across the country. And so we need to make sure that we're funding our programs and doing the things that we're allowed to do, especially now under this new autonomous legislation, to make sure that we can continue to attract the, uh, the, top, the top students and, and go head to head with some of those folks in, in those uh, Power Five leagues, as we'll call them. Um, we've been very proactive in that. The league is under uh, Commissioner McGlade has really been proactive in identifying what some of those things would be and working hard to, to mandate, uh, encourage that we mandate certain, uh, the, every member of the league do certain things. Um, and so the first being the, the cost of attendance, as I mentioned before. And so as a league, we know we're going to do that. There's a financial impact, but it's not as significant as, as what some of the other schools are, are having to deal with and what some of the other leagues are having to deal with. Again, because we know who we are, we're able to take advantage of this autonomous legislation, in my opinion, and really make it work for us. I think, again, we want to try to treat our basketball players. We want to treat all our student athletes, but we, we have to treat our basketball players at, at the highest possible level we can. And there was some legislation that came out last fall uh, where we are able to provide what, what's called unlimited meals. And, and schools are really getting a hard, having a hard time figuring out what that meant. Some schools were thinking, do I need to have 24-hour dining halls open? Do I need to have uh, uh, you know, food available, hot food available 24 hours a day? Other schools are making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in their weight rooms. And so everybody handles it differently. But in sitting down with our coaches, sitting down with Coach Hurley and, and Coach LaForce and saying, what do you envision the needs to be and how can we proactively uh, get in front of this? And so what we ended up doing is, is adding a uh, stipend on top of each of our men's and women's basketball uh, full scholarship players where they, they're able to go out and, and, and purchase food at night if they want to. Uh, they're, all, they're already on unlimited meal plans here and our dining services folks do an amazing job. The food is incredible and we just wanted to add to that. And I think you know after we came up with that concept and shared it with some of our, our conference uh, member uh, folks, they were, they were starting to do the same thing. I think it really worked for us. And, and the good news is we get to adjust if it's not working great. I think what's, it's going to really impact the, the programs out there that are trying to compete uh, at the national level without the resources necessary to do that. And that's what's hard. So what do I mean by that? You know, other programs in the FBS football that aren't in, at, at that level still need to try to recruit at that level. They still need to come up with the, the resources to put into those programs. You know, I think every league is going to be different. Every league's got to determine where they want to put their money and, and what they want to mandate. That's the other thing about autonomy. Every school is allowed to do whatever is allowed under this new autonomous legislation. But as a league, what we're going to do is sit back and say, this is most important to benefit our men's and women's basketball programs. And out of you know, five different pieces of autonomous legislation, there may be two that become mandated, and they become mandated at the presidential level because it's important.